In this module, we'll introduce the variational method. which is a tool for solving quantum mechanical problems approximately, in particular for finding the ground state wave functions and energy of a quantum mechanical system. And the way that it works is first by guessing the answer. The technical term for guessing the answer is that we introduce some trial wave function. We take a guess at the wave function and that wave function should depend on some parameters. And then once we have this this guess for what we think the answer should be, we then adjust the parameters in our trial wave function so that the expectation value of the energy for that wave function is as low as possible. So we adjust the parameters to find the wave function that gives us the lowest energy. And this method, the variational method, is based on the variational principle, which tells us that the parameters that give the lowest energy, the lowest expectation value for the energy, give us the wave function that's closest to the true wave function, which is a rather remarkable statement um, but it's quite easy to prove. So we'll start by proving this variational principle. That the parameters that give us the lowest energy give the best possible wave function, give the trial wave function that's closest to the true wave function. So the proof is quite straightforward. We'll complete it in just a couple of pages, but it's really quite remarkable. It means if we have some difficult quantum mechanical system, we have some Schrodinger equation that we don't know how to solve, we can take a guess at the wave function and then we can fiddle about with the wave function to make its energy as low as possible. And always by adjusting the wave function to lowering the energy, we're getting closer and cl closer to the true solution. Okay, so let's start by writing down the formal statement of the variational principle. Which is that if we have a system it's described by a Hamiltonian. With ground state energy. E zero. Then the expectation value for any trial wave function 
which is just the integral over the complex conjugate of the trial wave function times the Hamiltonian operator times the trial wave function integrated over all space. If our wave functions started off not normalized, we should all also normalize it. This expectation value of the energy of the trial wave function is always greater than or equal to E0 for any trial wave function. So again, a rather simple statement and a very powerful one. We can, whatever we guess for our trial wave function, we can never get an energy that's lower than the ground state energy. So we always know that our, the energy that we calculate for any trial wave function is an upper bound on, on the possible ground state energy. There's a follow-up also, which is that if the energy is equal to the ground state energy, if the calculated expectation value of the trial wave function is equal to the ground state energy, then the trial wave function is the true ground state wave function. And as we adjust our trial wave function so that the energy gets lower and lower, the trial wave function gets closer to the true ground state wave function. Okay, so that's the statement. And now let's prove it. Mm. So we'll proceed by writing our trial wave function as a linear combination of all of the solutions of the Schrodinger equation. For the Hamiltonian that we're interested in. It doesn't matter that we don't know what these are, hypothetically we can write that our trial wave function is equal to the sum over all of the solutions of the Schrodinger equation, all of the eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian multiplied by some coefficients where our psi sub n are defined by the Hamiltonian operator operating on psi sub n, returning a constant, which is the energy of the wave function times size of n. This is allowed, or it's always the case, that we can write our trial wave function in this form because the Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator, which means that its eigenfunctions form a complete set, they span the space, and we can always write any general wave function as a linear combination of them. So now let's consider the following integral of the complex conjugate of the trial wave function times the Hamiltonian minus the ground state energy times the trial wave function integrated over all space. And we're going to assume in, in the following that the trial wave function is normalized, so we don't have to keep writing the integral of psi trial, psi, psi trial in the denominator. Okay, now remember what we're trying to, setting out to prove is that the expectation value of the Hamiltonian with the trial wave function is greater than the ground state energy. And so what this integral that we've written here, we have to prove that this is greater than or equal to zero. That's the same, um, the same thing. 
Okay, so we're going to substitute in for psi trial and psi trial star with the sum over the eigenfunctions. And so as not to lose track of the coefficients, I'm going to use subscript n for psi trial star and subscript n prime for psi trial. And so my coefficients are c sub n star, c sub n prime, and then integrating over psi sub n star, where the psi sub n's are my eigenfunctions now, times h minus e zero, operating on psi sub n prime, integrating over all space. And because h operating on psi sub n is e sub n times psi sub n, or h operating on psi sub n prime is e sub n prime times psi sub n prime, I can replace my h psi sub n prime by e sub n prime psi sub n prime. And the e sub n prime is just a constant, so I can take that out of the integral. So let's do that. Summing over n, summing over n prime, C sub n star, C sub n prime. I'll take out of the integral E sub n prime minus E sub n minus E sub zero. Then I'm integrating Psi sub n star, Psi sub n prime over all space. And this I can simplify again if I assume that my psi sub n star and psi sub n prime are orthonormal, which I can always choose to be the case again because my Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator, then this integral is equal to one if n is equal to n prime and it's equal to zero if n is not equal to n prime. And so my double sum simplifies to a single sum, only the terms with n prime equal to n survive. And I have a sum over n, c sub n star, c sub n times e sub n minus e sub zero. Or if you prefer, maybe it's a bit more elegant to write the sum over n, the modulus c sub n squared times e sub n minus e sub zero. And this we can immediately see is greater than or equal to zero because by definition, e sub n is greater than or equal to e sub zero because e sub zero is the ground state energy and the square modulus of any complex number is non-negative. So we've shown then that the integral psi trial star h minus e zero psi trial over all space is greater than or equal to zero or the energy, the expectation value of the energy for the trial wave function is greater than or equal to the ground state energy, which is what we set out to prove. Let's finish by just mentioning a couple of places where the variation, variational principle is used in quantum mechanics. The first one is in finding molecular orbitals. So the energy levels for electrons in a molecule starting from linear combinations of atomic orbitals
where the variable parameters are the coefficients of the atomic orbitals that make up the molecular orbital. And this forms the basis of what's called LCAO theory, linear combination of atomic orbital theory, or it's also known as tight binding theory for the description of solids. The second example would be in calculating the ground state wave function and energy of many electron atoms from wave functions that might be products of single electron atomic orbitals. And what's commonly done in this approximation is to treat the charge on the nucleus as a variable parameter and adjust that to obtain the lowest energy solution. So that's it for today and thanks for listening.